Welcome to the fourth episode of The Artistic Spirit. My name is Robin Holiday, and I'm the owner and curator of Horse Spirit Arts Gallery in historic Ellicott City, Maryland. Tonight, my artist guest is mosaic and ceramic glass artist, Beverly Hunter. But before we begin, I'd like to introduce you to Rob Hicks. He is the co-owner of Enlightened Audio Visual. He is why this is all happening, um, he's the producer, he was the brainchild, and Rob, say hey. What do you mean, so this is why this is happening? That almost sounds like uh, <laughs> like, like you're trying hey, to avoid blame. Oh, so it almost sounds like you're trying to avoid blame. Like, uh, he's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> blame him. Nice, nice. Uh, so, hey, Charlene, says so Charlene's nice. in the chat. Oh, and she says, I can't hear anything. Uh, I don't know why she, I can hear it. Okay. David, how are you? I am good. Hey, listen, before we begin, can you explain to everybody how this works and, you know, how their comments can be heard on the air? Absolutely. So right now we are streaming to Facebook, to YouTube and to Twitter. And so we're monitoring the chat on all three. So if you've got a question or comment for Robin or for Beverly, Put it in the chat and we'll read it on air and uh, ask answer your questions. Easy peasy. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. Easy sure. peasy. That's All right. right. The first thing I'd like to do this week is I'd like to tell you about a business in Ellicott City. You know, we got hit by a flood on the 30th of July and we're all still recovering. But there was one business, Pam Long Photography, that every event, every business that came back online she videotaped and posted online. She did this all out of the kindness of her heart. She was never compensated for any of this, and she has been a real blessing to our community. So I'd like to show you this video clip so that you can meet Pam. Let's play it. Hi, I'm Pam Long. I'm an entrepreneur here in historic Ellicott City on Main Street. I own and operate a boutique portrait studio, Pam Long Photography. And that's where we are today. Rob, I can't People ask what my specialty is. We primarily photograph families, whether it's extended family because there's a special occasion, or an immediate family, parents or parent with their children, their pets. We have a great time whether we're here in the studio or out on location. High school seniors is a big part of my business. I love and adore working with them. They're so much fun. I like finding out their interests, and they truly inspire me daily. It's amazing by the time they're 17 or 18 what they've accomplished and what they can juggle with not only their academics, but if they have any hobbies, and you know, whether it's music or sports, and all the different clubs that the schools have to offer. And we really try to bring those interests into their portrait sessions. And then the business world, we work a lot with other businesses, whether we are photographing their events or headshots. And everybody needs to have an updated headshot, no matter what business they are in. Um, back to my specialty, my specialty is truly just bringing out the beauty in everybody. A lot of people feel intimidated when they walk into the studio and they look around, they're like, wow, do you only photograph beautiful people? I'm like, well, yeah, I do, because everybody's beautiful. And whether they know that about themselves or not when they come in, for sure they're gonna know by the time they leave because it, I find it's my job, my, my calling to show people how beautiful they are and to bring that inner beauty out. Um, so I can be reached at PamLongPhotography.com is our website. Our senior website is seniors at PamLongPhotography.com. Our studio phone, phone number is 410-988-5563. Facebook is Facebook.com forward slash PamLongPhotography. And then Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat are all at PamLongPhoto.
So I have to tell you, I have not met a more generous person than Pam Long. Um, Rob, thank you for shooting the video of her and meeting with her. It was much appreciated. Um, at this point, we are going to shift gears and get to what we've all been waiting for, and that is artist Beverly Hunter. I want to tell you that her background and education is in design. She is a 3D artist, if ever there was one. She has this tactile feel of color and excitement. And um, without further ado, I welcome artist Beverly Hunter. Hi. Hey, Hi. Beverly. It's so, it's so nice to have you here. Oh, I'm really excited. Thank you, Robin. Is that your studio in the background? Yeah, it's, um, it's my studio. Yeah. I just claimed part of the house, so we can call it a studio. Okay, there you go. That's what many artists do. We take over part of our own home. Exactly. Well, Bever Beverly, tell us about your art. Sure. What do you do? Um, well, everyone knows mosaic. It's a um, very, very, very old art form. And um, it's something I discovered a few years ago because um, I, I'm a graphic designer, so I've always composed things. I like to... Um, play with colors and shapes and and uh, I was always a, a portrait artist and um, many years ago uh, my ex-husband was a contractor and he would bring home pieces of tile and glass and beautiful beautiful materials from his jobs and I thought I was inspired one day to make use of those I thought well I'd hate to see those go in the landfill who's going to use them and so I spent the summer mosaicing our huge 20 foot concrete porch. Wow. <laughs> and from then on, it became an obsession, but um, obviously I downsized it and, and realized it was something I could do on a smaller scale. And, uh, and it just really um, inspired me to uh, search for materials that could be used to push the envelope a little bit, not just with glass and the traditional materials that you use in mosaics. Um, I love to scour antique stores and flea markets, wow. and anywhere to find little odds and ends that would go into a mosaic and make a really nice focal point. So it's, it's an obsession and um, my therapy and wonderful creative outlet. Oh, that is so great. I would like to say hey to Candy Saka, who is actually calling in from Tokyo. Thank you, Charlene and April. It's lovely to have you join us. So Beverly, let's go on a field trip of your studio okay. and you can tell us what we're looking at. Rob? So here we come. My house is a split level and um been here about three years and I think for the first year or so no one could eat dinner on the dining room table because that that's where I tended to perch I'd say I'll just finish this piece and then I'll move everything away and it never happened so I decided <laughs> <laughs> I decided the family room would be a really good place to to really install a permanent place so that's what I did um, I also have a, a, a garage with lots of storage and I keep um, a lot of materials in there too I have a lot stuff not, not a hoarder or anything but uh, if I see <laughs> if I see a big bag of um, cabochons or um, you know pretty glass or I I'll buy anything that I know I can utilize at a later date and sometimes I'll sort of scavenge in my own house um, that's me putting some glue down on a, a big piece I'm working on right now and um, I love doing big pieces that are so intense and I get really uh, focused and, and almost addicted until it's finished. Um, I love to see how my vision kind of comes to fruition. Um, and I think um, so one of the other artists said the same thing is after a really big piece, then I love to just kind of downsize it and do a few little pieces that are just sort of quick and spontaneous. Um, but I do love doing big pieces. This, this is part of a bust. I had a big mannequin and um, so that, that's very three dimensional. Um, I used to do a lot of sculpting out of clay. I actually have a kiln and that, that's just a little guy that I made actually with um, clay. Um, I'm inspired by faces, as you know, Robin. Robin thinks a lot of my stuff is scary, but I love <laughs> <laughs> oh. soft dolls. Um, I just love to incorporate 
spaces into, um, into work. I, I think it gives it just a, a more intimate feel. Uh, I've always done it. I don't know. It was just a, a thing that came to me naturally. So it's, that's now, Beverly, of... you have to admit the ones you showed there were pretty cute, but you also have this day of the dead thing going on and you have brought me some things that have actually frightened me. I'm so sorry. Which I, I did I, not I, take in the gallery. That's right. You live and learn. I do. I'm very inspired by, by really um, sort of exotic artwork. I love bright colors. I love, and I, and I do love Mexican artwork. I love Day of the Dead stuff. It's just beautiful. And um, I'm often inspired by that kind of uh, just crazy, vibrant color and shapes and people and skulls. And the color and shape pieces are wonderful. It's the pieces with the skulls on them that that I don't take into the gallery. I know, <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> now, Beverly, tell us what we're looking at, because this is your artwork in the gallery. It is. Um, another thing I love to do, and it, it really gives me a thrill if, if I um, kind of reclaim something that's been um, sort of beaten up or thrown away or um, just discovered and, and I know that I can repurpose it and, and refinish it. And this is um, a mirror that just had a fabulous shape. The mirror was beaten up. The frame was um, not in good shape. So I did some renovation on it and cleaned it up. And then it became this incredible substrate for, um, for a mosaic. And, you know, they say that your eyes are the window to your soul. And I, I think mirrors are beautiful. I... Um, you know, I think it opens up spaces and it's it, it makes it more personal because you see yourself in a mirror. Um, so something that's really, really decorative has a dual purpose. Uh, so I like to do mirrors and that particular piece, um, uh, there was a ceramic face on that. And I, I do make a lot of my own ceramic things, but that particular one was I purchased from another artist. And, um, well, your mirrors are beautiful. People have certainly bought them in the gallery and they've been so happy. Thank you. So Beverly, can you tell us more about your creative process? Because I think that's one thing people are really interested in. Okay, sure. Um, well, I mentioned that I often look for little treasures. You know, I'll go to a flea market or an antique store and find really, really old vintage jewelry um, or mismatched earrings, costume jewelry. And, and sometimes they don't even look like jewelry. They look like treasures. They look like beautiful little ornamentation. And um, I actually have a very good friend now who is a bead dealer. And the way we met was she was um, doing a, a sort of high-end flea market and she had all this fabulous materials. And I said to her, and this is a really odd question, but do you have any odd earrings mismatch and she said oh my goodness and we've been <laughs> fast friends since then and she, she supplies me with a lot of stuff but I'll I'll take a piece and that'll be my focal point and I'll just get a vision for um hi Nancy Lee Davis <laughs> thank you very much um, Nancy said so excited to see Beverly's work and Wiley said wow mosaics <laughs> so yeah I just I can very often picture something um, and just with a focal point build from it. Um, sometimes it doesn't always turn out the way that I imagine. Sometimes it evolves into something different that, that just, you know, as I'm working on it, it organically becomes something else that I'm still generally happy with. So this little piece is, uh, <laughs> Rob's pointing to it, is one of my ceramic faces. I do have a kiln and um, this is a little guy that I think I did it's sort of a clown face and I did some different glazing on it. Um, and I had, I think the, the crown element is just what I described. It was a mismatched piece of vintage jewelry that just to me spoke a headdress to a face. Um, and then incorporating other little pieces. I love cabochons, which are, are essentially flat back beads and you can get them in, in, in pearl or glass or all kinds of different materials. And I, I love to use those as well as stained glass. So there's a lot of glass in there that I've cut to size. And um, that's awesome. Hey, Rob, will you pull up some more pictures in the gallery? Because there's one in particular that has been in the window and it brings people right to the gallery. There we go. Thank you. And that actually survived the flood. It was, did. It's a flood survivor. 
That was amazing. It, it had some silt inside it and I had to kind of wash it out with bleach and but nothing rotted and nothing you know, there were a few little tiles I had to replace but honestly when th that was the least of my worries I thought it had floated down the river and I was okay with it but but I think I was pretty thrilled when I found out it survived so yeah yeah and that's a piece that has a little um vintage brooch of a, a peacock right in the center so that was my focal point and um and really built out from there I think and um, this was a, a friend of my son's um, who had, it, he played this guitar and I think he dropped it and broken it. And his mom said, go and give it to Beverly Hunter because she could do something. <laughs> and he came to my house one day and he said, my mom said that you could use this. And he was very, very um, not sure about it, but uh, they saw the final results and liked it. Um, this is a piece that is, um, I, I admire steampunk. Uh, I've never tried to do anything in that genre. I think this is probably the closest I came because there's some metal in there. There's some little um, pieces of mechanical stuff that just appeal to me by the shape and color and juxtaposed with um, a piece of wood and then the ceramics and the base and other pieces that I like to use came into it. So, um, <laughs> a double space. Um, I've got a whole collection of dolls too that unfortunately do get mutilated. I only want them for their faces generally. <laughs> so this is <laughs> this is showing my love for Barbie. Um, it's it's odd because uh, my two daughters never ever ever liked dolls. I was quite a doll girl when I was little, and I had some Barbies. But the, my my girls always loved dogs. But anyway, so uh, I think whenever they were given a Barbie as a gift, I was like, yay! I can <laughs> So, and that the crown is something I did um, in my kiln, ceramic. Um, another piece, this, I found gorgeous, vibrant orange mirror glass and wanted it to be a frame to something. I really wanted it to pop. And I like, um, I like the contrast against the blue. So this was just really a sort of collage uh, study of color. Um, and it's a small piece and it's sort of um, distressed wood, which I really like too. I like the idea of having bright color, smooth, shiny, pretty things against something more rustic and rough. I just, I love all those juxtapositions. Another mirror. <laughs> um, this is a thicker piece. Um, and I use larger, larger terrace, um, which is the traditional square tile. Um, and then sort of moving over, it becomes more random. So this was again, just a sort of, um, abstract collage but using color and shape to, uh, to put it together. It's a nice close-up Rob, thank you. Well they're just beautiful. Thank you very much. Can you much. tell us a little bit more about an inspiration for a particular piece? Sure, actually um, the piece that you saw in the video that I was working on putting the glue, I literally had a dream. Um, wow. and I had bought a beautiful, it's a big chalkboard actually, an old chalkboard and it's got a lovely shape on it. And so it's got this big area to put an image on. And I was thinking a lot about what I wanted to do. And I've done them before where I actually incorporate people into the actual artwork as opposed to just putting a, a, a ceramic piece into it. So I had this idea in my mind of two profiles facing each other but being a little bit, um, not alien, but just a little bit not human. And they've got human characteristics, but with wild colors and, and um, beautiful big eyes and just lots of um, utilizing all of my mirrored tiles and that kind of thing. So that's what I'm working on right now. It was a dream. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That is really amazing. Hey, Beverly, if somebody wanted to start getting involved and doing mosaics what is one of the things that you would share with them um well one of my early inspirations when i um did the mosaic with no experience and really not knowing what i was doing i decided to look into it a little bit more and um, many years ago there was um a famous knitter called cafe facet and he used to do very intricate knitting patterns and um, I came across a book that he had done about mosaics. And so I bought it and I poured over it. And I just thought, oh my God, I've just stumbled 
on something that just meets all of the criteria of my creativity. Um, you know, putting things together and color and no, no sort of borders. There's nothing holding you back. There's sky's the limit so in terms of size, materials, etc. And so um, I would say to, you know, Google, um, you can, I, I'm sure there are YouTube videos on mosaicing. I've actually looked into classes in Italy, the traditional, you know, thousands and thousands of year old tradition. Um, but I, I probably learned that I'm doing things wrong. So I can't <laughs> <laughs> I told myself, and I think uh, I, really creativity, the sky's the limit again. You can just, you know, there's, there's no rules. Well, tell us about this piece. This is really lovely. Thank you. Um, I have, I've sort of bought glass over the years. I have a lot of glass and I, I often cut them down into small pieces, but I had um, some very, very vibrant yellows and blues. And I thought, well, that's so pretty. I'm just going to do one big random shape. And I often do, if I have a piece of glass that's sort of marbled or has multicolors, then I'll incorporate that to show the beauty of the glass and not ruin it by cutting it down. So I had a lovely um, blue, blue, cobalt blue piece of glass that I cut down to a, an odd shape and made that the focal point and then it just grew from there. Wow, wow. So you encourage people to start this, start mosaics? You know, um, my sister came over probably 10 or 12 years ago and um, we were just hanging out and she's, she always said, I haven't got a creative bone in my body. You got all the creative genes. And I said, well, I don't think that's true. You know, and I introduced her to it and she found like I do that it's very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. She actually went home and did not, not as sort of crazy in terms of materials and elements as I do, but she did some she, very, very, um, I do not teach classes, but I have been asked, in fact, take that back. My friend, the beader, the person who sells beads, um, came to my house and I taught her how to do it. She made a magnificent piece and she brought her two children and they all had a blast. And I was like, whoa, her piece is oh my. <laughs> but no, she loved it. Don't think she's done any since, but um, it was just a really fun gathering. But if someone's interested, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. First, I think you should do a demo in the gallery. Um, oh, okay. We should definitely make that possible. And then we should think about um, where you can have a gathering and, and actually, you know, show people and have them create something kind of like paint night, but mosaic night. I, I love that. That'd be fun. Yes. That'd be really fun. All right, deal. I'll bring the beer. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> All right, tell me, tell me, what else would you like the viewer to know about your art and about you? Um, I, um, you know, I did it for my own pleasure and for my own therapy. You know, we all have sort of rough times in our life and um, it did see me through a very rough period. I, it was something I looked forward to in a fairly dark period in my life and I would go at the end of the night and sometimes stay up super, super late doing it, but it gave me it sort of replenished my spirit. And I think that's true of all art. I think, um, I think it's a very, very therapeutic thing. And I think um, all of the artists I've ever met and spoken to, you know, do it because it's a passion. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that you as a gallery owner have just managed to gather the most incredible, incredible people that I don't know I ever would have met had it not been for you. And I'm so grateful for that because, um, they're just genuine, lovely kindred spirits. And, um, and I feel so, so honored to yeah. be part of the community. No, seriously, I'm, I love it. I, I feel like I've um, landed um, next to the part at the bottom of the rainbow because, uh, you know, selling my work is, is the cherry on top. <laughs> <laughs> because it's yeah. so much fun to be involved. So, um, yeah, well, I feel an honor to represent you, Beverly. You're very talented and you are such a kind hearted, lovely person. Oh, thank you. Back at you. <laughs> thank you. Well, at this point in our show, um, I want to tell you what's going to happen next week. So next week, 
we have um, a wood turner. His name is Alan Exopolis. And Alan is actually a master wood turner. He is one of the best that I have ever seen. He has some pieces in the gallery that are really magnificent. He has this huge round disc that must have required a lathe. I can't imagine how big his lathe is that did this. My husband, who is also a wood turner, says he has lathe envy. So <laughs> if you're a wood turner, you're really going to want to tune in for next week. Um, Rob, anything else you'd like to add? So, K Candy Sakai, uh, who you, you said I can't uh, hear you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this time I muted you guys <laughs> rather than Facebook. So Candy Sakai has, has been uh, here the last four shows, and she's one of my special pals from, from Tokyo. And earlier this week, she had sent me uh, a, a couple of photos, but I got to share with you guys uh, some of her work. Th this, wow. the, the pigeons in this is just outstanding, and she's got gazillions of these. Wow. So as a personal favor, uh, and in extending our elegant city reach all the way to Tokyo, Japan, uh, I would hope that you guys would, would connect with uh, with Candy because she is just such a, a sweetheart, and uh, she's it's just awesome to have her as part of this uh, little Main Street community. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's so great. Uh, Didn't you say that was in Time Magazine? Uh, so, so Candy, you'll have to correct me in the chat. I don't remember. I think there was a, a picture that she had taken of the cherry blossoms overlooking. Mount Fuji that actually won. Um, wow. But yeah, she's just crazy talented with, uh, with that camera. Wow. Yeah. Well, you tell her if she moves to Ellicott city, please come see me. I'm sure she will. <laughs> uh, that'd be lovely. That'd be lovely. All right. Well, well in closing, um, thanks to Beverly. It was lovely to have you join us and Rob, thank you so much for even making this show possible. Um, I just want to close with one thing about the gallery. We have 46 local artists. Um, we have a very wide range of art. I consider many things art. And I have to tell you, when people come in and they tell me they don't have an artistic bone in their body, I don't believe them at all. If you are in an art gallery and you are looking around and you are enjoying yourself, there's a very good chance there's an inner artist in there. So I hope that you will come to Ellicott City and visit us. We're getting back on our feet. There's many wonderful businesses. And again, next week will be Wood Turner, Alan Exopolis. It was a pleasure to be with you and have a great night. Thank you.